welcome back to my channel. So for today's video, I'm gonna be switching it up just a little bit again. Today, I'm gonna be doing my first ever anti-haul video for you guys. And I've seen a couple of people do this video and most recently, I've just become hooked to watching things that you are not gonna be purchasing. And with all the new releases and new makeup brands that have been dropping lately, I just feel like it's kind of time to really narrow down what I really do need, what really does interest me, and what really doesn't. So for those of you guys that don't know what an anti-haul video is, like me just a little bit ago. An anti-haul is pretty much me sharing with you guys product that I don't have with me and that I don't plan on purchasing in the future. So I will insert like little images here for you guys and like some information here if I want to share any other thoughts or something. I feel like sometimes we kind of get bogged down in like having to purchase every single thing that comes out. It's very time consuming trying to keep up and it's just not cost effective. There are things that really don't interest me so why would I purchase them? So if you guys are interested in hearing some of the things that I will not be purchasing and go ahead stay tuned and keep on watching so I made a list on my phone so if you guys see me look down a lot it's because I'm looking at my phone for my list the first thing I will not be purchasing is the Coco collection face palette and again I'll insert a picture right here and I was kind of debating between it I kind of wanted it because I love like face palettes that come with blushes highlights and bronzers the swatches looked really nice but then another part of me is like do I really need another face palette I have so many face palettes that have that blush highlight contour or like just contour contour palettes or just highlight palettes like I have a lot of those products already and then to top that all off I haven't heard the best reviews on Kylie's highlighters I've heard from so many people and so many youtubers that I watch that her highlighters are just okay that they're not gonna give you that like bam intense highlight that you guys know I absolutely love it's just like a okay highlighter like it's a more neutral kind of highlighter I wasn't really enticed to buy like the actual single highlighters or the actual single blushes kind of reevaluating myself I really don't need another face palette especially if the products are just kind of okay so that's something that I'm totally gonna be passing on even if they restock it again so the next two things are from the same brand so I'll just let you guys know both of them right now they're both from Huda Beauty and the first thing that I'm not gonna be purchasing from Huda is the 3d highlight palette I think is what it's called I'm not 100% sure but again I'll have a picture right here and I'll have the correct name down here for you guys but I'm not gonna be purchasing that highlight palette first and foremost I was a little bit underwhelmed with the eye palette that she came out it wasn't anything spectacular so I just kind of have that like bad taste in my mouth that her highlight palette is gonna be the same thing I've also seen swatches of the palette and they're pretty but again they're not anything like oh my god so revolutionary so intense so out there it makes me want to actually pay to get that palette and then on top of that I mean I have already so many highlighters and highlight palettes that I actually truly love and really really enjoy so to kind of maybe risk my money on something that may be good or may not be good I'm kind of just not about and then the other thing that I'm not gonna be buying from her is the Huda lip strobe so it's like the metallic liquid lipsticks that she's coming out with or that she already came out with I haven't really been following it but I'm not gonna be purchasing those just because if you watch any of my past videos I'm not even really big on the metallic trend I have like a chrome attic uh, lip product that I purchased from Milani and I really like it because I'm not one to uh, wear metallic metallic liquid lipsticks on their own I have to like mix it in with other liquid lipsticks or like with other lip products and it is a little time consuming just making sure that it's not so like metallic and in your face reflective so I have that one and then I have the enchufada one from Reina Rebelde that I really really love so both of those are more wearable to me even those being more wearable I still don't wear them all that often so I'm just not big into the metallic lip trend and then Huda's lip products I personally feel in my own opinion are just a little bit overrated like they're a really good product but I have other products that perform just as well if not better than hers so I'm just kind of like mm on that so there are a couple palettes that I don't anticipate purchasing within the next couple of months I'm pretty sure that I'm not gonna be purchasing them the first one is from Urban Decay I think this one already released I've seen tons of people get PR from this but it just didn't really entice me all that much but it is the Urban Decay Naked Heat eyeshadow palette so it's this one right here it is part of the Naked collection like Naked 1, Naked 2, Naked 3 or whatever and when I first saw a picture of it I was really like ooh you know because it has warm tones and you guys know I live in warm tones I love warm tones who doesn't love warm tones how many times can I say warm tones so when I first saw it I was like really drawn in because of the warm tones and when I thought about it a little bit more I don't even have any of the other naked palettes because I never really use them so I have the naked 2 palette and I think 
I don't even have that one anymore. I think I gave that away to my sister because I just never really used it. The formula of Urban Decay eyeshadows is just not my favorite in general. They have some that are really good, like in their Naked Basics palettes. I do like that one, but like their actual naked palettes were never my favorite. They never really drew me in. Not to mention, most recently, I have been seeing a lot of people kind of give their first initial thoughts on it. Most of them seem to be like, it's okay or like it's not really that good. I haven't seen someone rave completely about it, like defend it 100%, so to spend over 50 bucks for an eyeshadow palette that I'm kind of on the fence about and that they're kind of on the fence about, it's kind of made no sense to me. So I'm going to be passing on that. So the next two products are from two different brands, but they both have to do with glitter. The first one is the Kat Von D Shade and Light Glimmer Eyeshadow Palette. It's this one right here. All the colors look the exact same as a Shade and Light Palette. So it's like, I have the Shade and Light Palette in all matte, now I'm gonna buy the Shade and Light palette, which is like the exact same shades, only just to get them in a different texture and shimmer and glitter. Like, if that's something you like, and if you're really a fan of the Shade and Light original matte palette, this may be something you're into. It just kind of seemed like a waste for me. I'm pretty sure somewhere in my makeup collection, I have a glittery black shadow, I have a glittery orange shadow, and I've just never been one to be like, I'm gonna get this palette in all mattes, and then I'm gonna get this palette in all shimmers. Like, you know what I mean? It just kind of made more sense for me to have some shimmers and some mattes. But if that's you, do you, boo? And the other eyeshadow palette that I'm not going to be getting is the Glitter Bomb from Too Faced. And it's this one right here. And I'm pretty sure all of these are glitters except the two on the end, like a white one and a black one. When I first saw this, this wasn't something that really interested me right away. The colors aren't colors that I use in shimmer shades. I think there's like a bluish one, like a grayish one and a purpley one. I never really wear glitter purple, glitter gray eyeshadows. And if I do, I want it to be glitter, not an actual eyeshadow. So just the concept of this palette didn't really entice me and the actual colors of this palette didn't really entice me. I feel like making glitters like a pressed glitter shadow is very hit or miss for most brands. There's only a couple of brands, a couple select shadows, end up being very pigmented, very glittery and shimmery on the eye and don't have crazy fallout. I feel like it's very hard to do, so I kind of just don't want to risk spending my money on that, you know? Oh my God, my battery's about to die. There are two highlighters that I will also not be purchasing. Both of these are from Becca. The first one is the Becca and Jaclyn Hill Limited Edition Champagne Pop Collector's Edition. I already have Champagne Pop in its original like little package when she first came out with and then I also have champagne pop in that like face palette that she came out with so I have two champagne pops already and quite honestly like I feel like this is just me but I wasn't blown away by champagne pop I feel like it's a really good highlighter but it's not an amazing highlighter like I feel like a lot of people hype it up to be it's a good formula because Becca has a good formula already her moonstone opal and stuff have really good formulas so of course champagne pops gonna have a good formula I do like the shade it's more like a peachy champagne -y shade that's why it's called champagne pop but on me personally it wasn't anything amazing like Jaclyn Hill posts all these pictures of her drenched in it and how beaming and glowing it is and on me personally I've never gotten that it's a really good highlighter like I said but it's not like one of my favorite highlighters I'm not gonna be getting that limited edition um, packaging it's just uh, it's overkill for me at this point I don't really need to get that and I also don't need to be getting the Becca Cosmetics light chaser highlighters they're more of the like holographic iridescent kind of highlighters and I've never really been drawn to that kind of highlight just because I should be, but I'm not very adventurous in my makeup skills. Like, I'll add pops of color here and there, or some graphic liner here and there. But most of the time, if I do my makeup, like today, I do have somewhere I need to be afterwards, or, you know, I'll wear this the rest of the day running errands or whatever, and I don't want it to be, like, a purple or, like, blue or green streak on my face. And if that's you, no issue to you. I'm sure it looks great on you. I just feel like on me personally, it doesn't look that great, and I never really use highlighters like that, so I probably wouldn't get much use out of it. I can't remember which one's called. I'll insert a picture of the one I'm talking about here. I purchased that one and even that one I'll use sparingly. Like I won't use it by itself or like go ham with it. So I'm like if that's a more tame version of these then I'm probably not going to get any use out of these. So I'm going to pass on those. So I'm just going to list two more products and then we will be done because I can honestly sit here all day and give you explanations as to why I'm not going to buy these products. 
but I'm not gonna do that too. I will also not be purchasing any of the NARS cream blushes. I'm just not a cream blush person. I don't feel like it looks amazing on me. I don't feel like it would fit into my routine. It's a little bit more time consuming than I wanna be spending on my face, and I just have so many beautiful powder blushes that I'm like, why am I gonna get a cream one if I'm always gonna reach for a powder one, especially when I travel and stuff? It's always gonna be powder. So I'm gonna be passing on those, especially considering the shades didn't really appeal to me. Like, they're pretty, but I'm not like, oh my gosh, I need to have this shade. So I'm going to be passing on that one. And this last item is honestly something that I'm like on the fence about. And that's the only reason I'm including it in this video. So I'm not going to say it's a hard pass. I'm not going to be getting it. But I'm kind of on the fence about, and that is the Jaclyn Hill and Morphe palette. Like I said, I'm still not 100% sure if I'm going to be passing on that. But the reason I wanted to include it on here is because I want to get you guys' feedback. Like, are you guys going to be getting the palette? Do you think I should get the palette? The reason that I'm kind of on the fence about it is because I feel like a lot of those shades don't really entice me all that much. Like uh, like I said, I have a lot of neutral tones. I have a lot of, you know, browns and rich browns and like warm tones and stuff. And I love warm tones. I live in warm tones. But I have her original palette that she came out with with Morphe like three years ago. And I never really use it. Like I used it a lot when I first got it. And after that, I didn't really use it because in my opinion, I really feel like Morphe's eyeshadows are hit or miss. There are some eyeshadows that are amazing and then there's some eyeshadows that are just like, okay. And of course, Jacqueline is going to defend her product till the end. All the swatches she's showing us are super pigmented and everything like that. But from my personal experience, even with the Kathleen Lights palette, there are some shadows that just don't blend as nicely as the other ones that are just not as pigmented as the other ones and like i said the shades like i'm never gonna wear that blue or that green in her original palette she also had a, like a greenish color i never really wear it all that much i really should be more adventurous with my makeup but i know what i like and what i'm going to use and i'm just over spending money on a product because some youtubers slap their name on it so i'm still on the fence about it because like i said i love warm tones and they're a lot of eyeshadows in that palette and like I said Morphe does have some good eyeshadows. Some of their eyeshadows are so pigmented so beautiful on the lid and I could use every single day. There are some shadows in like the 35O palette that I love but there are also some shadows that I don't really love and not to mention pay like the $7.99 shipping to get one thing. I'm like I don't know. I don't know. So leave it down in the comments below if you guys are going to be getting that palette because I really want to know. It's a limited edition product, so you know limited edition just kind of like, like zoops me in, you know what I mean? But I don't want to drop money on something that's just going to be like, it's okay. It's all right. But that is going to do it for today's video. Like I said, leave it down in the comments below if you guys agree with any of these products or if there's something that you're like, I'm not going to be getting this for this reason. I totally want to know so I can avoid that product too. Twitter, Snapchat, Instagram, all that stuff is going to be linked down below for you guys as well as coupon codes to help you save some money. Don't forget to hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I post new videos and make sure you are subscribed because again at 2k, 2k, I'm going to be having a huge 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 ginormous giveaway and you guys want to be a part of it thank you guys so much for watching and i will see you all in my next video bye